You guys remember this tower we built a little while back? This is the height Y60 build that we did. Uh, I haven't installed an OS or anything on this yet because I figured it would make the perfect opportunity to make a 2023 refresher for what to do after building your tower. It's mostly the same, but because of the new hardware uh, limitations and some of the different things to think about when it comes to AF AM5 as well as uh, 13th gen, I figured we'd just kind of take you guys along for the ride, make this a Windows 11 updated type of video so that you guys can stop asking me. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. Wish you didn't grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. So at this point in your build, we're gonna assume you've already bench tested your parts, they post, they turn on, and you're looking at a screen similar to this. Now you might also find on your first po uh, post or boot that it has a DOS looking screen that says something along the lines of CPU has changed, push F1 to enter setup, etc. Um, if you see that, then yes, push F1, and you'll see a screen that looks similar to this. Now this is gonna look different based on the manufacturer that you've got for your motherboard. We use Asus a lot around here, so this is gonna look pretty much similar to any Asus uh, either ROG or TUF or Strix motherboard that you might find, both for AMD and Intel. They'll look very, very similar. Now, there's a few things we wanna check before we even start installing anything, but speaking of installs, there's a couple things we're gonna need. One, you need your, your Windows install media. For this particular guide, we assume you're installing Windows. If you're doing Linux or something like that, it's gonna be a completely different process, and this isn't gonna to apply to you once we get to the OS installation phase, um, but some of the pre-setup we're gonna do with our BIOS is still gonna to apply to you. Uh, so you need your Windows install media or your OS install media, and you're gonna need another thumb drive because one of the things that we are gonna do uh, with the newest hardware, whether it be 12th gen, 13th gen, or AM5 especially, is updating our BIOS on our motherboard. And the reason for that is giving us the best compatibility with all the different kinds of RAM that is out there. It is possible that you may have picked up RAM sticks that are newer than the BIOS that's on your motherboard, which could lead to some instability or crashing or just weird wonkiness of your system if you are using RAM that has not had a BIOS update that is putting it on the QVL or the quality verification list for RAM and your particular system. So although I'm the kind of person that adopts the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and most people would say it posted, therefore it ain't broke. Once you go to enable your XMP or your extreme memory profile on uh, an Intel system or your AMD Expo in an AM5 system, and you start pushing the advertised RAM speed that is on the sticks of RAM, then you might start noticing some issues. So a few things we're gonna be checking for here. First and foremost is our CPU temperature. Now that's this guy right here. CPU temperature hovering in 46C right now on a 13900K. Um, running 1.447 volts, this is a, an appropriate temperature. What you wanna look for is, is that temperature steadily climbing and climbing and climbing and not stopping? That could be an indicator that maybe your pump isn't plugged in or something is wrong with your water cooling install or your air cooling install. That could indicate that something is, is wrong there and you would wanna check for that. So the first thing you're gonna look at is your CPU temperature in your BIOS. There is a load applied to your CPU and BIOS because the voltage goes up and it will show itself if there's any problems. The second thing you're gonna look for is is your RAM status. And the nice thing about this main basic page here that you find on ASUS motherboards is the fact that you can find all this stuff right on the same page. So here is your RAM. You can see that we've got both of our RAM sticks installed in channel A and channel B, both the second slot. Doesn't matter if it's an A1, B1, or A2, B2 most of the time, but I wanna make sure that both sticks are showing up if you have two sticks. If we had four sticks installed and only three were showing up, it could be an indicator of a bad RAM stick. Maybe a stick isn't seated properly all the way down, or maybe even your motherboard compatibility issues again with QVL and four sticks, all kinds of weird things can happen. But you might notice these are, I believe these are 6,000 or 6,200 megahertz sticks somewhere around there. They're only showing 4,800 megahertz. And that's because as you can see right here, XMP is disabled. It's gonna say AMD Expo if you're in an AMD, an AMD setup. You do not want to enable this yet for the reasons that I just stated. They may cause stability issues if you activate it. The last thing you wanna deal with when installing your operating system is any sort of CPU crash or memory failure uh, when it comes to stability on your particular platform. Don't do that yet. This is where we are gonna go ahead and take our second USB drive that we have here 
you are gonna take the, manu the, the model of your motherboard and you're gonna, on another system, hopefully you have access to a laptop or even a basic Chromebook or something, that you can go on to another system that's connected to the internet, go to the latest BIOS page for your manufacturer of motherboard and download the latest BIOS. In fact, the one that we're installing right here um, actually had an install or an update eight days ago. And that is much newer than we built this system. So we know that we're gonna be getting uh, and it will say in the change not, the change logs what exactly has changed. Most of the time you're gonna see general stability up, uh, fixes or updates and more than likely memory compatibility updates because memory is just churning out fast right now with manufacturers. And this is a DDR5 system, so that's something to keep in mind. Now one thing we wanna do before we go ahead and update our BIOS is check our storage information. We only have one two terabyte NVMe drive. It's a Samsung SSD 980 Pro two terabyte and it is showing up right here. If you have multiple drives installed, you wanna make sure that they're all showing up on the list. One of the things that we tend to do around here though is if we have any SATA drives that are plugged into our system, when we install Windows, we unplug those drives or at least unplug the power to them. That way Windows can't accidentally be installed on one of those by mistake. But since we only have one drive in the system, that's not an issue. Now if you're on an ASUS motherboard, you can hit F7 to get into the advanced menu. You can right arrow over to tool and then that's where we're gonna use the ASUS Easy Flash 3 utility. And you can see right here, if we go to our storage device, which is this guy, here is our new BIOS right here, the SZ790E.cap. That is our, um, our updater or our firmware BIOS for this particular motherboard. So it says, please back up your BitLocker recovery key and suspend BitLocker encryption in the operating system before updating your firmware. That's just a, a general advisory. You might be looking at that going, I, I didn't set up a BitLocker, what am I supposed to do? It's just warning you, if you have one, you need to go and back it up right now. We don't use a BitLocker, so we're gonna go ahead and move forward. Anyway, yes, we wanna read the file. It's gonna kind of lock up a little bit when you do that. Version 0813, we are currently on version 0401. So as you can see, we are way behind. And, and it's not even to just be stability stuff. It could also be voltage optimizations. Anyway, the date on that uh, shows 11023. That's fine, we're gonna go ahead and update that. This is where it is very, very important. If you have a cat or a dog or whatever, kick them out of the room. Don't have them anywhere near your system where they can accidentally unplug the cord. If you have your feet under your desk and the power strip, scoot away. The last thing you wanna do is unplug your system or lose power when you're doing a BIOS update. Now fortunately, just about every modern motherboard that's around the $220, $250 range and newer has what's called a BIOS flashback feature, which means you don't even need a CPU in the RAM or anything installed in your motherboard to BIOS flash your motherboard. You just need power going to it. And that's where you plug it into a certain port in the back of your motherboard and there's a button sequence that you can use to recover your motherboard if it gets borked during a BIOS flash install. We're not covering that today because we're not gonna have anything go wrong and lose power during our BIOS update. Now this can take a while and it can take several reboots. As tempted as you may be on the restart, when you see a black screen, and you're tempted to shut the system down going, oh, it didn't work, I need to reset it. Don't do it, let it go. Just be Elsa and let it go, okay? If you keep an eye, if you have a particular like Q code readout on your motherboard, you'll notice that after the BIOS flash is done, it is gonna go through and retrain the memory. And there's different areas of the motherboard that get flashed at different restart intervals. So for instance, the main firmware is being flashed after it clears the EEPROM right now. It's going through a clear process. It's gonna flash the EEPROM, it's gonna restart the system, and then it's going to basically go through and it's gonna re, it, it, you're gonna probably see the notification again that the CPU has changed. That's just because it doesn't have any history of what's been installed once it's cleared the EEPROM. And then it's gonna go through and retrain the memory and then it's gotta go through and it's gotta reflash the management engine inside the BIOS. And this all happens usually after a couple of different restarts. So you need to just let it go until the entire process is done and you're sitting there at the screen again that says press F1 to enter setup. Okay, so here we go. We've, done, we've gone through several restarts. It's flashed various areas of the BIOS, including the LED, because Aura is also uh, available on the motherboard itself through like BIOS settings. Um, now we need to enter the setup, which is F1, to complete everything going on there. Now I've talked about RAID and whatnot. Like if you're building your very first system and you're like, what do I do after building the tower? You don't have to worry about RAID. You didn't have one set up. And you, if you did, you would have already known what to do to protect it and get it, keep it, um, in place after a BIOS update. So I'm gonna hit F7 and I'm also gonna go over here to the AI tweaker because uh, Asus motherboards like to enable their own optimizations out of the box. And we are gonna turn this off and we are gonna go disabled enforce all limits. 
So this is gonna stop any auto overclocking, any reduction of turbo timers or addition of turbo timers or addition of amps, all the stuff that it happens that it does behind the scenes uh, by flipping that switch on to enhance uh, auto optimized to keep clock speeds higher. We're gonna leave it all stock out of the box. What we need to do now is we can go ahead and unplug our BIOS. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our install media. We're gonna hit F10 to save our settings. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and auto boot into our Windows installer. And if all goes according to plan, we should be able to actually bypass the Windows Microsoft account needed. We're gonna try and get around that today. Now, honorable mention is when you start changing some of those settings like the optimized defaults and stuff, you might notice on the first restart, it's kind of slow. The reason for that is anytime you make any major changes inside the operating system, or excuse me, inside the BIOS, uh, it will go through and retrain the memory again. So it takes a while to retrain that memory. What you'll notice is if I didn't change anything again and did another restart, it'd be much, much faster. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and select our language, our time and all that sort of stuff. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna hit install now. So our setup is gonna start and then it's gonna tell us to in, put in our activation key. Now what we're gonna do first is we're gonna say, I don't have a product key. So I'm gonna click on this and we're gonna install Windows 11 Home. Now we do have the Windows 11 installed disk even though it says Windows 10 because we have the Windows 10 key, but you can use the same Windows keys for Windows 10 and 11. Same thing if you install 10 and you upgrade to 11, you don't need a Windows 11 key, it becomes part of the, un, the install. And we're gonna hit next, we're gonna accept. We're gonna hit next. We're going to custom install Windows. There's the only drive that's showing. If you have multiple drives, you need to make sure you somehow keep track of whichever one it is that you're installing on. If you have multiple of the same size NVMe drives, it doesn't really matter which one it goes on, to be honest. Um, it's gonna turn into your C drive and then the other ones will be allocated to your other letters. And we are gonna hit next. And now we're gonna let it go ahead and copy all the files onto the actual SSD, and then it's gonna install it from there. If it was trying to install off of this flash drive, it would take a really, really long time. It's much faster to do it off of the SSD and also much safer when it comes to restarts and stuff. Most modern systems, this goes incredibly fast. In fact, we are just about done copying all the files and installation, and the install will go really fast on any modern hardware. All right. So after you do that, it's gonna go ahead and restart. On the restart, we can go ahead and once it goes black, we can yank out our install media. I do this for good measure. One reason and one reason only. Somehow, way back in the day, I'm not sure how it happened, I ended up with the install key on here. Which meant if that USB stick wasn't in the system, it would not boot because the bootloader was like a key on here, which is actually a really neat security feature. But if you don't want that, then you don't want this thing sitting in the drive all the time. So I did that on accident once and I don't know how I did it. Windows kind of did it on its own. So it's out of habit now. I always pull that out after the restart, but now you can see it's getting everything ready. So depending on what country you're in, click your country. I'm in the United States, so I'll be clicking that. So we're gonna say yes. It's gonna ask us about keyboard layouts. Yes, we want a standard US keyboard layout. Nope, I do not want any other layouts. So uh, we're gonna skip on that. This is where it's gonna say, let's connect you to the internet. And the funny thing is, Windows carries basically all of the like wireless and NIC drivers that you're gonna find, because they, they tend to all run off the same couple of different manufacturers, whether they're integrated into your motherboard or it's a card uh, or whatever. So it's you can see the wireless is showing up specifically because of the fact that it, it installs the drivers at the time of copying over. And that's for this very reason right here. It wants you to no matter what, connect it to the internet. That way it can, it can say, hey, we need to connect yourself to the Microsoft account. So we're gonna try some workarounds right now. We're gonna go ahead and do Shift F10, which brings up the command prompt. And we are going to type OOBE, which stands for out of box experience, backslash bypass NRO. Okay, so here we go again. It rebooted back to the installers. We'll just go through the steps again. United States, US keyboard layout, no more layouts. I don't have internet. Continue with limited setup. And this is exactly what we wanted. So that's the new command right there. It's OOBE for out of box experience backslash bypass NRO. And that's the command that will get you into not having to use a Windows installer or a Microsoft account for Windows installer. So we're just gonna call it JPC. Next, enter a password. We're not gonna put one in because it's just for the sake of the video. Uncheck all these boxes. This is just all of Windows spy telemetry. 
So we're gonna accept that. Hi, we're getting your devices ready. And this is where it's gonna go through now and go ahead and it's gonna install any drivers for things that it recognizes. If you're running an AMD or an Nvidia graphics card, I guess we're an Intel graphics card now these days, it will install a driver automatically, but it will be an out of date one. Um, you're, we're gonna go through and manually update those drivers, drivers and stuff next. But we're gonna let this finish. And then the very next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and connect ourselves to the internet. And then we are gonna perform all of the updates that are necessary for Windows. All right, so the very first thing we need to do, like I said, is update. So you might have noticed down here in the tray, you see a, an update icon, which is the two arrows in a circle with a red dot. And that just means you're missing important updates. Um, the important updates it's typically referring to are security updates, uh, and you'll see quite a few of those. So you can click on that, which will automatically bring up the Windows updater, and it's gonna tell you all of the things that are missing. Now you might see this here, there's security intelligence update, install error, there's the Windows 11, 64, uh, KB4, whatever, install, pending install. So this part could take a while. This depends entirely on your internet connection. Uh, and you're gonna notice there's gonna be several restarts because some of these will download, install, pending restart to finish, and then they might fail. When you have a ton of updates happening at the same time, sometimes they kind of step on each other as they're doing things and there's a certain order they should be installed and they always follow that order. So you might see an install error like that's on there. And then as the updates one at a time check themselves off as being complete, those errored out updates will fix themselves. And you'll notice I still have not installed or put in our uh, product key yet. At some point it will prompt you. I'm not gonna put it in until prompted. One thing you need to keep in mind though is if you are using either a pirated copy or you're using a key that's already been used uh, too many times, basically what Windows will not allow you to do is customize or basically have any personalization to your desktop. So you won't be able to change the color scheme, you'll even be able to change the background image or any of that. Um, it's one of the things that they do to try and make sure that you stay on a legit copy of Windows. It's up to you to determine what key you're using, how you got it, where you got it. I don't, that's not my problem, that's yours. So we're just gonna let this go through and do its thing and it could take a few minutes, it could take a couple hours depending on your internet connection. All right, so once it's done doing its first restart after installing the first batch of updates, because there's gonna be more to do, you'll see this, let's finish setting up your device. Now this is where they wanna basically sell you some of their subscription stuff, have access to things like your webcam, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I just say continue and then I don't check any of these boxes because, and I say skip, because I don't want to give it access to my webcam to do like, I'm gonna smile on my webcam to unlock my computer, like stupid stuff like that. So just keep clicking skip on everything for now, not now, et cetera, et cetera. This is now where once again, it's gonna try and make you add a Microsoft account. All you're gonna do is control alt delete. And you're gonna go to um, like, look at the processes that are running and you're gonna find one called search. If you right click on that and end task on search, it'll bring you right back to the desktop. Um, and then on a restart, it didn't come back again. But you might see that whenever you have uh, additional updates in the future. Now you can see here, we had some failed updates and that's because of the reasons I already told you. So we can just click retry now and you can see that it's gonna go ahead and start checking for updates. It's gonna see what needs to be applied. And then we're gonna just keep going through this process until it says you're up to date. In fact, we don't even need to restart because while I was talking about what you could do with your system, it says you are up to date. This is an NVIDIA 4090 graphics card in here. So we're gonna go to nvidia.com. So we're gonna go at the top right here where it says drivers. We're gonna, so RTX 40 series, RTX 4090. You'll just find the right graphics card for, that matches yours. We are Windows 11. We're gonna search. We're gonna download and then you can double click it. Just go through the prompts. Yes, we want to install it. Now, some people might ask, Jay, how often should you upgrade, upgrade your drivers? That's gonna depend. Usually, I don't upgrade my driver unless it fixes a major issue that may have shown up in a previous driver, or I'm playing a brand new game that requires a driver update to properly be able to run that game without bugs and glitches. So, it's kind of up to you. Again, i one of those people that really subscribe to the if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of a thing, except for cars. I, I don't do that, but anyway, I digress. If you wanna install GeForce Experience, that's up to you. I tend to install no GeForce Experience. I don't care about shadow play. I don't care about letting GeForce optimize my games. I don't care about any of that sort of stuff. I just find it to be another form of bloatware personally. So I don't install GeForce Experience, you might want to. Since this is the first install of this driver, I'm just gonna go with Express, not a custom advanced clean install, which is something I'd recommend if you were overriding an existing driver, it'd be click custom, advanced, and then click the button that says perform clean install. That'll wipe the driver, restart the system, install a clean driver. 
So now that the installer is done installing, there's something else we need to do. This is a high refresh rate monitor, and now we need to set our refresh rate. If you don't go in and actually tell your system you have a high refresh rate monitor, it's gonna just stay at 60 FPS. So there's two ways we can do this. We can go into the driver here, we can go to change resolution, and then it's our native, this is a 4K panel, and then our refresh rate, we can set that to 144 hertz, hit apply, it'll restart the monitor, click yes. Now we have our high refresh rate going. The other way you can do it is right click, display settings. This is Windows controlling it. I like to set it at a driver level, not Windows, but you can do it either way and it will also apply in the driver. If we scroll down here to advanced display, we can then select our refresh rate right here. The other thing we need to do now is we need to get the software installed for any components that we have. Now this system is utilizing both uh, Corsair's IQ, because it is an H-series AIO in here, and it has an ASUS motherboard, which means that it's going to be utilizing Armory Crate for doing ASUS Aura. Now, when it comes to your motherboard, you're gonna have to go and to the, the same page that you found your driver for when we did our BIOS update, you'll find software and utilities. That's where you can download your RGB controller for your either your ASUS motherboard, your MSI motherboard, your Gigabyte, Aorus, um, ASRock, all of them. So we're not gonna waste any more time in this video showing you how to do that. The last thing we wanna do now is we're gonna go ahead and go to our Windows button, click our start uh, restart menu, hit restart. And we are going to hold down the delete key once it is starting to restart and we're past the restart because now we need to turn on our go fast bits. These are things that you paid for, especially when it comes to the RAM. Now we're gonna make sure that we're getting the full advertised speed. Okay, now we're gonna go here to XMP. We're gonna hit enabled. Now you can see we're gonna get the 6,000 megahertz we've paid for. So we're going up from 4,800 to 6,000. And before we touch anything else, we're gonna hit F10. We're gonna hit okay and we're gonna make sure it posts. Now it's gonna take a minute. You're gonna notice the Q code readout in the right might go around a few times. You might notice the LEDs above it going from red to green to white to yellow to red to green because it's training the memory. So as it's doing that, it's gonna restart potentially a few times. It just restarted again. So that's three restarts. There we got a white LED, so it finally trained. And it's green, which means we're in CPU. We got a video. I'm hitting delete because I wanna go to the BIOS. I beat it before the splash screen. And check that out. Now we are running, well, it says 4,800 megahertz with XMP enabled. So if I go F7, our RAM is running at 6,000. So I just wanted to keep that in mind. It might look like 4,800, but if you look at the actual advanced screen, you'll get that. While we're in advanced, go over to AI Tweaker. We're gonna come down here to our disabled and force all limits. We are gonna put that back to auto let BIOS optimize. This is gonna allow it to do a little bit of an extra turbo timer so that it runs longer and keeps the core clocks higher based on temperatures and power draw and all that without having to worry, worry about going in and applying any sort of overclock. One thing we can also do here is the Intel Adaptive Boost technology from auto disabled to enabled. We're just gonna leave it at enabled. That way it's default enabled because we have a, a, a good cooling solution in here, plenty of airflow in this case, and a full-size motherboard with overbuilt VRMs. I feel confident with letting these limits go up. If we were in an ITX small form factor, small cooler, it'd be asking a lot of a 13900K to try and stay cool in those conditions. Hit F10, Windows should boot without a problem. And at that point, you're then ready to start installing your games and you guys will have now built your first tower and gotten all your software and stuff set up. Now there's a ton of different, a ton of different uh, combinations of parts you could have here. Different RAM, we we'll we use different software to control it. Different motherboards use different software to control it. You've got, um, you know, your Intel and your AMD utilities. So AMD's got the global watt manager for an Adrenaline software for its GPUs. It's also got the Ryzen master for the CPU. You've got XTU or extreme tuning utility for Intel. And these are a little bit more advanced pieces of software that you probably should not go in and start messing around with if you are very new uh, to PCs because you could easily get yourself in a situation where the system's not booting, it's unstable, and you just don't know where to go from there. Anyway, there you go. There's our 2023 version of how to install uh, your software on your tower after you're done building it, including the little bonus workaround on how to tell Microsoft accounts to go and F off. All right, guys, if you want to tell me to go F off, do it down in the comments below or subscribe. That way you can tell me to F off in every video I upload.